This is Carl Nashville RV Detroit and I'm going to walk through this 2021 Flagstaff Mac model 208 tent camper. Okay, so this is a supplemental video. The, the manufacturer has a video that shows you how to raise it and lower it and um, we're going to also show you that when you pick it up. But I'm going to go over some of the other features. Okay, so obviously you have a griddle out here that uh, sits on this rack that hangs on the rail on the side of the trailer next to the utility table here. So you have to plug this into the LP system with this quick connect here. There's a valve on it here so make sure you turn the valve on. Um, and it attaches right there. Okay, And uh, you have power there of course. Um, up front here you have um, two deep cycle marine batteries wired together at 12 volts so it just doubles the storage capacity. You have two 20 pound LP tanks with a automatic changeover regulator and you have the power wrench to raise and lower the roof. Now when you raise the roof you raise it till it's taut. This green tension line is taut. That, that puts it in a, the roof at the right height so the door, the screen door fits properly. Okay. Also the, the controls for the refrigerator are outside. So you just turn these little things vertically and then you wrangle it off here. Okay, so um, you can only use one energy source at a time, although this works on AC power, DC power, and LP gas. But like it says that on that sticker, only use one energy source at a time. The most common way is just is AC power, 110 AC, you just turn it on. Next, it's tw you can use 12 volt DC, turn it on, and you can also light it on gas by going to the high, depressing it, and then pushing the red button to spark it. And you heard it light right there. Okay, and there's the spy hole so you can actually see if it lights. All right, um, let me shut that back off. Only use one energy source, of course. Never double up. City water hookup, uh, most common way to get water the, to the trailer. The second most common is to use the, the fresh water tank and then and use the electric pump inside to pump water. If you're rustic camping or camping at a campsite that doesn't have plumbing, you can use this uh, uh, fresh water tank and pump. This is your sink drain here. Your cord is 30 amp and 30 feet long. This is just AC prep. This is pre-prep for an air conditioner. So that's what that is right now. You don't use it for anything. It's just in case you wanted to add an air conditioner. One last thing before we go inside. The travel door right here. You can see how it's underneath. I just used, put. they've got a hinges up here and you put the pins through it and you latch it up there to get it out of the way when you're set up. All right. Also, for the, for the awning, keep in mind that all the poles in the rafter and everything are stored inside the awning. So you, they're all attached. You can't, you can't really lose it. So uh, it's a really good system. It's the uh, Domatic A&E uh, bag awning okay, with LED light strip. Also, while we're looking up here, you want to remember you want to inspect the uh, seals on the trailer. So you want to look at all the corner caps, four corner caps, look at the um, sealant around the roof vent. You do this every 90 days or so, just give it a good look over to make sure there's no cracking or separation. And if you do see it, you take care of it immediately. You don't use um, caulk from the hardware store. You, you have to use the proper uh, stuff, which is in this case is called Clear Proflex. You have to get it from an RV place. It's only about 10 bucks for a caulk tube, so it's not expensive. All right, you, any place you see caulk from the factory, you inspect. It's very important when you own any trailer, okay? All right, so let's go inside now. We're still prepping here. So I'm just going to go over a few things here. Of course, um, the thing to know all about, about this sink, there's two buttons underneath, and those are kill switches. If you notice when I go like this, the lights go out, the power cuts. That's because the, it'll only power up when this is in the upright position. So keep in mind there are two, two kill switches buttons, and uh, just so you know that they're there. Of course, that's your furnace, and of course the thermostat is right here. Always click this white lever, if you can see it, all the way to the left until it clicks. That's very important. You want to shut it off. Okay, let me. I'm going to set this down for a second so I can pull this table off the base here. show you this stuff here. Um, first of all, these are these are mattress warmers. Alright, so they plug into that over there on your mattress. There's a, uh, a port there to hook this 
this side here of the controller onto and then the next other side plugs into 110 and it just takes the chill out of your mattresses it doesn't warm them so I mean it doesn't heat them it just gives them a little bit warm so keep that in mind a lot of people think it should be warmer but that's not the way they are they're just to take the chill out um, that's just a spatula obviously and this is a, a um, fan light combo for uh, that you hang right here on the bar and then you plug it in right up here okay all right so um, let me see what else we have here okay all right so here this is the switch for your water pump to turn it on and off right now I have water in the tank right and the pumps on you can hear that it's not running it's nice and quiet but if you notice when I come over here you can see the tank water lever or, or valve is to the right so listen you can hear the pump turn on and turn off so that's all you're going to do when you're using the fresh water tank and the pump is you just uh, it'll you keep it on and when it pressurizes it shuts off by itself when the pressure drops it turns on and starts pumping so it's a uh, it's a uh, that's the way to go now if you have city water you don't have to worry about the tank or the pump or anything all right okay this is a GFCI here this GF all the plugs in this trailer including the one on the outside are wired to the GFCI so if you're using a uh, something outside and it pops uh, um, you come in here to reset it all right this device here is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. Um, it detects carbon monoxide buildup, LP gas uh, leak, right? So it'll go off, you know, and, and alert you if that happens. Of course, if it happens, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front and figure out what's going on. Um, it'll also tell you if your battery's low. It'll be very slowly. So I'm going to set it off. It'll go through. First it'll test for LP, then for carbon monoxide, then it'll display the... Uh, or sound the uh, the low battery alarm. So here we go. LP, here comes carbon dioxide. And low battery alert, four times. And then it goes back to green. It should always be green like that. If not, get it serviced. This device here is the power converter. It converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So, um, on this side you have regular household type circuit breakers 110 AC and they're labeled then the power is converted to 12 volt DC on this side so you have your regular 12 volt fuses here right if they ever blow uh, they'll actually light up and you can see them through this perforation here all right and as long as you're plugged in this is a battery tender it will uh, it'll um, Sense how much energy your batteries need, and if they're totally if they're charged, it'll, it'll just trickle a couple amps up there. If it, they're low, it'll send 15 or whatever it needs to keep them charged. Okay, it's kind of semi-smart in that way. And I'm I'm being I'm being uh, generous by calling it semi-smart. So. Okay. All right. So your keys are hanging right here. Okay. Um, this here is a hanging pantry or is it called a war this is the hanging pantry so it, there should be hooks right here you can see them right there so it, it hangs up there um, this is your your tank cover here and this is your this bag here holds your cord your your short cord and then this is your uh, all your your uh, manuals and documents on all the different components of the trailer okay now this vent you got to keep in mind it, it latches shut so you have to turn it this way to unlatch it and then you would crank it open here and set the speed you got three speeds this is just a fuse in here all right so when you're traveling you want that closed locked so it doesn't creep open you know if it's raining out you don't want water creeping in there so remember to latch it when you're before you bring down the the, the roof on the pop-up okay um, that's that's kind of really what I needed to show you um, I'm going to look around a, a bit to make sure I don't forget anything, but I think that covers it. Um, there's also a crank here uh, somewhere. Let's see. I just saw it over right here. That's for your stabilizer jacks there. Okay. All right. So um, there's storage underneath some of the benches. Uh, and don't forget your smoke alarm, of course. Uh, so the screen door stores up in this position up here, which we'll show you when you pick it up. So... 
that. So, okay, so I want to thank you for uh, purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And I want to also remind you what I told you about, about inspecting the seals on the trailer. That's the most important thing you can do. That and winterizing are the most important things you can do as a trailer owner. So you want to do that on a regular basis. And this thing will be bone dry 20 years from now. Um, all trailers have to be inspected and resealed as needed. It doesn't matter what model or what brand it is. They're all the same in that sense. So make sure you keep up after it. And um, uh, thank you for purchasing it. And uh, we'll, if you have any questions after seeing this, we'll, we'll help you out when you uh, come to pick up the trailer. Okay? Thank you.